Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about propositions. Propositions are the basic building blocks of logic. A proposition is a declarative sentence, that is, it's a sentence that is either true or false, but not both. During this video, all the texts that you see around here, those are definitions that you need to learn. You will see why definitions are important in mathematics and actually we can't do anything in mathematics if we don't know the definitions. So let's check some examples. For instance, John has a cell phone. Why is this a proposition? We, if we see the definition of what a proposition is, it says that it's a fact that is either true or false, but not both. So, John has a cell phone is either true or false, but it cannot be both. That's why this is a proposition. And this is the reasoning you have to do every time you are going to find out if a sentence is a proposition or not. This is another example. What time is it? So, the answer to what time is it is not yes or not. So is the time. So that is why in this case that is not a proposition. Why is not a proposition? Because it doesn't follow the definition. You see the definition again is either true or false. So what time is it is neither true or false. That's why it's not a proposition. This is another example. Jane is a computer science student. In this case this one it is a proposition because it is either true or false. Now, 1 plus 1 equal 2. That's a proposition because in this case, this is equal to true. Isn't it like that? 1 plus 1 equal 2 is true. So, in this case, for that reason, that is a proposition. Let's check another example. 2 plus 2 equals 3. Is that a proposition? Okay, let's check again the definition. Proposition is a sentence that declares a fact. It is either true or false, but not both. So this declares a fact stating that 2 plus 2 equals 3. In this case, this is not true, because we all know from mathematics that it's false. But you cannot say that it's false and it's also true. That's why it is a proposition. So, at the beginning when people start studying propositions, they, they get confused sometimes with examples like this. They think it is not a proposition because it is false. But if you check the definition, proposition can be false. Okay? It's just that it cannot be both true and false. So, when we talk about propositions and we work with propositions, we use a certain convention. We call these uh, letters to denote propositions, we call them propositional variables, and the variables that we use are P, Q, R, S, and so on. We don't use A and B to denote propositions. It's not that we cannot use them, it is just that is against the conventions. So you, in all the examples that you will see in the books about discrete mathematics, you will see that all these propositional variables are mostly P, Q, R, and S. So that is because there is a convention that those are the letters that are supposed to be used. So propositions has what is called the truth value. This value can be true and is denoted by a uppercase T if it is a true proposition. And if it's false, then it will be denoted by uppercase F, and then we will say that it's a false proposition. Remember that propositions can be true or false, but not both of them. Many mathematical statements are constructed by combining one or more propositions. So, only one proposition, it, it won't solve too many things, although it helps. So what we normally do is combine two or more propositions 
so then we can express more complex statements. So these new propositions, we are going to call them compound propositions, and we are just going to use the propositions that we already have, and then we are going to combine them by using some logical operators that we are going to see just right now. So the first logical operator we are going to see is the negation, which is uh, represented by this symbol, and it just means the negation of a proposition. If the truth value of the proposition P is true, then the truth value of the negation of P is false. If the truth value of P is false, then the truth value of the negation of P will be true. We normally read this, if, if, we, are, if we are going to read it in English, we can say no P, or we can also say it is not the case that P. We are going to see the examples in English. On, on, on how we can treat these uh, propositions and negations in plain English. So as you saw from this table, the truth value of the negation of P is just the opposite of the truth value of P. So this is an important thing that you need to remember, this table here that states what are the values of the negation. So let's see these examples in plain English. Find the negation of the proposition Michael's PC runs Linux, and express this in simple English. As you saw before, you can read the negation as it is not a case of P. So in this case, P will be equal to Michael's PC runs Linux. This is P. So if we say it is not a case that P, then the English sentence will look like it is not a case that Michael's PC runs Linux. But we usually don't speak like that in English. There is simpler ways to state this type of sentence in English, like for instance, My Michael's PC doesn't run Linux. So now let's talk a bit about logical operators. So what are the logical operators? It's, it's the ones that we are going to use to create compound propositions. So let P and Q be propositions. Remember, we are going to use P, Q, R, S as a convention. So we call the conjunction of P and Q, and we denote it with this symbol. It's a symbol that in all programming languages represents AND. And the compound proposition is P and Q. Okay, and we read it like that, P and Q. But we don't usually write AND. We just write this symbol. Okay? So the conjunction is true when both P and Q are true. And is false otherwise. As you can see here in this summary table, P and Q is true only when P is true and Q is true. In all the rest of the cases, is false. So you need to learn this table because it's what will allow you to solve the exercises. So let's check this example. Find the conjunction of the propositions P and Q where P is a proposition, Rebecca's PC has more than 16 gigs free hard disk space, and Q is a proposition, a processor in Rebecca's PC runs faster than one gigahertz. So to solve this exercise, we just use the conjunction as we saw it in the previous slide, and then the, the conjunction will be Rebecca's PC has more than 16 gigs free hard, hard disk space, and the processor in Rebecca's PC runs faster than 1 gigahertz. So there is another logical operator, what we call OR, it is also called disjunction, and then the disjunction between P and Q is denoted like this, P or Q, and is read P or Q. So the disjunction is false when both P and Q are false. In other, any other case is true. So if you see here, the truth value of the disjunction is false 
when both of when both of them p and q are false and is true in any other case so this is important to learn it because when you are going to solve the exercises later on you will need to know what is the result of of this table this or is also called the inclusive or and is use it the same way that or is used in english let's see this example students who have taken calculus or computer science can take this class so in this case actually the meaning of, of what we want to express is that you have to take at least one of the two courses to take this class this uh, operator is what is called the inclusive or what this exactly means is that all the students who take calculus or take computer science or both of them can take the class so there is an exclusive or that the difference is that only those who have taken exactly one of two courses can take this class we call that the, the exclusive or and in plain english we can write it like this students who have taken calculus or computer science but not both can enroll in this class when we have this type of sentence we don't use the the inclusive or we use the exclusive or and this is how we are going to denote that compound proposition then we have conditional statements let p and q be propositions the conditional statement that we write it like this p write arrow q is the proposition if p then q you can we can also read it like p implies q okay so now for this type of statements we have to see how we can calculate the truth value of the compound proposition now the way that we do this is the compound proposition or p implies q is false only if p is true and q is false because true can never imply false and is true in any other case so there are more terminology that you can use to express uh, conditional statements you see some of them here if p then q p implies q if p q anyway you can use any terminology you want in my case i just prefer p implies q and also if p then q because it's the one that we use in programming so let's see this example this is a conditional statement if 2 plus 2 equals 4 then x equals x plus 1 this is kind of a simple statement that we have in programming but we can have this type of statement anywhere in our daily lives for instance if it doesn't rain then i will go out so there are many many examples so then if x equal to zero before this statement after the statement x will be equal to one why because this compound proposition is true then x equal to x which is zero plus one is one so the value of x will be one As you can see the propositions are the basic building blocks in discrete mathematics but also in programming i can't imagine how can someone will be able to write a software to write a code a simple one if they don't use this type of conditions so there are three types of definitions that we use also when we have conditional statements we can calculate the converse of a conditional statement for instance if we have p implies q then the converse of p implies q is q implies p then we have the contrapositive and then we have the inverse now we have by conditional statements so these by conditional statements are very very important in mathematics and you will see them written in this way p if and only if q okay anytime you see something like this in a mathematics book if and only if p if and only if q 
That's a back conditional statement and we are going to write it in this way. This is the notation we are going to use. So as a summary, we saw in this uh, short presentation, we talk about propositions. What are the conventions that you are going to use? Remember, we are going to use P, Q, R, S as, as the propositional variables. We saw what is a truth value of a proposition. We also saw compound propositions, logical operators, conditional statements and biconditional statements. So what's come next now is how to create the truth tables of certain compound propositions. So now on our next video, I will give you practical examples of giving some compound propositions how we are going to create the truth tables for those propositions. You will see that to solve those exercises we will need to use what we studied in this video. So if you need it, just watch again the video and make sure you understand the main concepts. I will also recommend you to write the definitions on a paper and also the tables that show the truth values of compound propositions when we use logical operators, conditional statements and biconditional statements. You write them on a paper and you keep it very close to you because you are going to need it when you are going to solve the exercises. Thank you very much. See you on the next video.